So today it's Friday and we did that Joe Pix set, the one which looks like the Thunderbolt 3000 but was slightly different firmware. And whilst I was ordering from the wholesalers for that, I ordered this other one which was the only other Joe Pix offering, the GX60. Uh, I, I don't know if I've seen this in another guise. Uh, but anyway, there we are. We'll have a look at this. And so we'll have a box opening ceremony. Oh, I can't even get into it. Let's get an instruction book, which is handy. And a radio with a an attached power lead. And bare wires, which suits me, but may not suit everybody. And the usual fitting kits and a microphone in quite a heavy duty bag. A bit light for me. Um, I'm sure I've seen a CRT one like that. And then today, instead of the normal uh, green bench we have, somebody said that they seem to think I scratched a lot of the sets. I don't know why they think that. So today, I've put a piece of 80 grade sandpaper on the bench so we scratch the set to the maximum because I'd hate to see somebody to think that I scratched radios so we'll make sure that we do a good job of it so we'll connect this up to our handy power supply except the wires haven't been bed enough to go into our power supply so we'll start by removing a bit more of the insulation now if you're doing this to a chop block in your car it would probably be okay but isn't to our power supply okay and we'll switch on don't know why our current radio seems to have a heat sink on the back, but they didn't do in days gone by. They, I don't seem to remember having any overheating problems. Who on earth is this? Anyway, serial number ends 91, so they haven't made a lot of those, have they? Right. Let's see if my sandpaper grips the side of this radio nicely while I take the, the screws out. Is it one of those sets with screws in the back? And the answer is no. So it's got a pluggable speaker with a tiny little voice coil. So we'll connect this up to the test set. Now this looks to me like one of those sets with no adjustments whatsoever. So does that mean there's a menu somewhere? Just change glasses and have a look. So we've got the number 807, PQ807, mm. well we'll plug the mic in, so there must be a hidden menu. P 
picture in picture on and then we can see when I press transmit so we're going to have to set this up for the UK and find English Well, according to this, there's CTCSS in there, but I, I don't know whether this is a general thing for other things. And two voice, uh, uh, vox sensitivity. How to do a factory reset is it's useful. So holding down the AMFM key when we switch on. Okay. UK and press the PTT. Is it? No. Is it? Press that again. Does it switch it off? Yes, it is. So if we put this now on channel 20, and let's see what power the radio is doing. That's the usual. Oh, he's two and a half watts so let's look at the deviation we'll do the whistle test while uh, hang on why have I got no nothing oh we're on UK but it's defaulted to you uh, to CPT channels so we have to press the AM FM button so if we press that again what happens it goes to AM on CPT FM on CPT and then FM of course on UK settings so it does wrap around how you'd want it to for the UK while deviation is 1.8 so that's too low so we'll go back to transmit power because that was an unfair test because we tested it on CPT. It's actually 2.4 watts. So there must be a hidden menu. What fun. Settings menu. Because it's got these settings which are user ones. C D Oh right, that was the CTCSS menu. So we'll do that again. Wrong wrong button. Emergency button, long press, CTCSS. Key beep, scan type, high cut, microphone gain. So 
microphone type electro or whatever vox sensitivity talk back not quite sure what that does noise blanker we don't need to use that offsets for um, wait well, in RF gain uh, in this case it's off Roger bleep off color orange brightness for timeout timer emergencies channel 9 emergency to reset so we don't have to do that and then we go back to the CTCSS menu which is off so we're going to have to guess what brings it into a mode so I'm going to pause the video and we'll see if I can faff it out it's, it's nice. well we appear to have got into a menu we now say it's power high FM so I'll put the trans put the test set on key up and oh we're in 12 watts there so it can't be that one um, that'll be for some other feature power medium is 6 power low is 2.5 so that's the one we need to be altering from 51 so now how do we select that so No. Power low. Aha. So whilst pressing transmit, there we go. We've got four watts. Ah. It seems to be pretty similar to that um, CRT S Mini, doesn't it? So let's go and see if we can find another parameter. We just need deviation. FM mod, that will be it. And it requires us to do it on channel 9, which isn't convenient for me. So we'll have to reset the deviation meter. Wallow. Testing 1, 2. Yeah, it looks like it's while like, testing one, two, one, two, one, two. There we go, right. So, we'll get the deviation meter. Sorry, the oscillator. And as you can see, that's quite low. So, we'll bring that up. Let's bring that up to two. That's top of the shop, to be honest. Let's do a whistle test. Wallow. One, two. Wait, it looked like it was top of the shop. Let's try again, because it's still inadequate. Let's check the meters tuned in. One, two. Wallow. Right, so I've overshot it. So FF is the absolute maximum. So let's see what that's doing. Wallow. I don't know why this is reading so low. 
but it is. So we'll try and reset it again. One, two, one, two. Wallop. Just managed to get two and a tiny bit out of it. Well, that's the maximum it's going to go to. Okay, so there are the two menu things. And I'm not going to touch anything more than that, but we'll see what else it's got. Tone, CTCSS, Digital Code Squash by the looks of it, AM, uh, the 4 watt power, just for the record, we'll just see what power that's doing, and that's 4 watts. I'm not going to touch the squelch readings, because I remember we had to use the signal generator to bring those back uh, with, when we fiddled with the S Mini. So I wonder if it's the same board as the S Mini. That's probably something to look back on. So we need to get out of that menu now, and I wonder how we do that. Perhaps we just switch off. So it's come back on amber as it was. And the, we'll go, we're on channel 20. He's doing 4 watts. And the deviation, I'll just read to you my meter. Because I had to, it was only going to do that test on channel 9, if you remember. Walla. One, two. 2.2 to 2.5. So miraculously, the channel I wanted to work on is actually perfect. So that's all we can do let's look at that sensitivity but at least we've got four watts the radio seems to be capable of a bit more but you've got to take this with a, a pinch of salt because i can tell you that that is hotter than i would like on where the power regulators are whereas the transmit heat sink it, it's hardly anything at all but it could be a 12 it could be a 12 watt pa i don't know what they reckon these are in some kind of dodgy export mode but uh, anyway that's where we are. Oh, how did we get into that menu? Well, I seem to recall that I pressed channel up and down together to make it do that. But I didn't, did I? So was it down and squelch? No, it wasn't. Was it up and squelch? No, it wasn't. How on earth did I get into it? <laughs> so, it is up and down together. There we are. But don't mess, you know, if you're going to go into those menus, some of those have got to be set with the signal generator. So if you haven't got a signal generator, you will never be able to reset it. And I know we had that trouble with the S Mini. Um, I just, you know, I really had to put some time into it because I messed with the squelch setting, and then the squelch would never ever close. It was sat there hissing all the time, and uh, to do that, I had to set the signal generator up to the required squelch dropout for, um, level, and then memorise that into the radio. So without the test equipment, you could end up with a a radio that no longer works. So watch that if you if you're not if you haven't got the test equipment. Obviously, you need a power meter and a dummy load to do what we've done here, and the deviation meter. So I'm, let's have a look at how it well receives. So we now know it's working beautifully on transmit. So on receive, switch it on, and we'll get the signal generator set up onto channel. Twenty. Okay, so we'll set the squelch so it is off. Oh, that's another interesting point. Um, S nine should be hundred microvolts, and it is. What I wish I'd done and we might go back on that, is has it got a real power meter? We'll go back to transmit. It's telling me there that it's doing that level of of bars. I'll tell you what, let's go back into the setup menu. 
and we'll do the power again so I've got four watts on my meter Oh, that's frequency adjust. It's frequency adjust that the first one, and I've now got it spot on with the. It's these are spot test frequencies which the radio. Where are we? I don't think I've had this on the right uh, thing, have I? I? The camera's not been on the right thing. Oh dear, sorry about that. I'm using an LCD monitor and. The trouble is, from the angle I am, I can't see. When I had the previous system with the CRT monitors, I could see fine. OK, so the spot frequency which the manufacturers have chosen to do this is 24. Oh, this, this is the um, bottom end of what its capability is. So 24715. So the next spot frequency is what? Yeah, 27,420 is where we need to be adjusting it. So 27,205. And then we can trim that frequency. And there we have it, that's about where we want it to be. So let's go up the menu again. Frequency, we don't want to do that. Power, medium, power, low, there we are. So back to, I'll move this back because you'd never saw it in the first place. It's just actually slightly over now. At 4.1. So if I move the as you can see on the meter of the radio, it's reading between five and it's reading six. So if I turn this down, you can see my test set is going down. And actually, so is the bar graph on the radio. So it looks like it could well have a sensing power meter. So we're back to four watts there. And it's showing five on there, which it, which is meaningless. But there we go. So I'll go back out of that, and we'll carry on with what we were doing. And luckily, it's remembered we we're on channel twenty. So let's see what kind of sensitivity we've got. What we need to do is to drop the squelch off. So. Squelch off. So it's the Jupix GS60. Up, down for service menu. Then we look at the 20 dB, 12 dB, 10 dB Synad. Let's see what we've got. So I'll move the camera up to the cyanide meter, and then you can see this with me. If I can 
find the sign I've made to. There it is. Here we go. So we want 20 dB. And we have what? Well, that's an exceptionally good figure. It's um, it's 0.4 for 20 dB. They're not usually under 0.9. See, the way these are manufactured, the with no adjustments, I know it's a pain in the what's it for the, with these menu systems, but the way they're manufactured is that they're tested during assembly. They have a, a pin jig which the board goes on, and certain components are fitted, and then upon the results of the test so far, further components are fitted. And so the tolerances are very tight. So, oops, what am I doing? We're now going to 12 decibel. And 12 decibel, it's about there. And it's 0 0.16 microvolts. And the 10 decibel is 0 0.14 microvolts. Yeah, normally these are 0.3. So let's see what the manufacturer says as I slide it all along the sandpaper. It says better than one microvolt for 10 decibels. Well, their better than has worked out to be 0.14 of a microvolt. So, can't be bad. That's an exceedingly good result, probably the best one we've ever seen. So that's all there is to it. I'm not going to start looking for CTCSS and things like that. It's not what I do here. But we've got 4 watts out of it. And we've done the deviation. And it's on frequency. So let's see how that squelch performs. So we'll park the signal generator at 0.3 of a microvolt and switch it off. And I'll move... I'll turn the volume down. And I'll move this camera down to those controls where we erroneously started off with. So I still showed you you're doing 4 watts in the end. There we go. So we'll switch the signal drone off, we've done that. We'll set the squelch with it when we find the right button. Just like that. So the minimum squelch is what so it's point it's coming in at 0 0.6 microvolts it's dropping off at 0 0.3 so that's how we are at the moment and I've, it's probably got auto squelch is that auto squelch that's key lock now we're in auto squelch. And it's, it, the way it's set, it is what? It's, it's one, it's 0.75 to open, just under 0.8 of a microvolt and just lower than 0.5 to close and that that is again adjustable um, it, it was on auto squelch setting 6 so let's go to manual squelch again somehow
and we'll put that now to full. I didn't do it in the time I allocated. So it's 34 is the maximum. And it comes in at about plus 20. So that's fair enough as a maximum squelch. And again, this is a pain. I've got to go into squelch and then fiddle with it. So we'll leave it for now in setting two. And I'll, put, I'll pause the video while we put the lid back on the radio. So back on the with aerial now. They're probably about 35 miles away at Nottingham. So we'll go through the channels. Nineteen or Roger. I don't think his voice is broken. Nineteen or Roger. So it wraps round. So with CPT FM UK FM of course. And then CPT AM through to CPT FM through to UK. So it does what you'd want it to do in for the UK market. And we've after those menu adjustments, we've got four watts, we've got full deviation, and it's got very good sensitivity. Probably the best I've ever seen, to be honest. So we'll see how that performs on Scratchy Corner later on with Mr. Chippy. And let's look for scratches on the radio. I don't think I've scratched it that much on the sandpaper. So uh, there you go. Scratchy radio for Scratchy Corner. Thank you for watching.